Hello, statistics students. This is your instructor, Dr. Todd Daniel, and this week I'm going to show you how to do a one sample t test using the program JASP. Let's begin by asking what is a one sample t test? It is a parametric procedure, meaning that we are using values from a population to compare a sample. And it tests whether a sample mean is statistically significantly different from the population mean. But we use the one sample t-test when we do not know the standard deviation of the population. So in this example with the polar bears, you can see that I have a population value of 100. I also have a sample which has a mean of 150 and a standard deviation of 9. I could use the standard deviation of 9 to estimate the population and I would have to do that because I don't know the population standard deviation. However, because I'm estimating from the sample, I'm going to have to subtract one from my sample size when I determine my degrees of freedom. Well, before we jump into all of the specifics about the t-test, let's find out what our challenge is today. Juan Valdez sells bags of coffee labeled 16 ounces. He wonders if the machine that weighs and bags the beans is properly aligned. He selects a random sample of 32 bags, which contain an average of 16.3 ounces, with a standard deviation of 0.52 ounces. Test whether the machine is working within specification. We will use our five steps of hypothesis testing to test this research question. And we'll begin with step one, where we select the appropriate test. Well, let's determine what data we have. We have a single sample. It is a sample of bags of coffee, each of which has been weighed. And so we can determine a sample mean from the weights of those bags of coffee. The coffee bags have been drawn from a population of all of the coffee bags that are being produced at this time. Our sample has a mean and a standard deviation, but our population does not have a standard deviation, only the mean of 16. This is the setup for which we would use a one sample t-test. Now that we know what test we're going to use, let's make sure that our data pass the assumptions for this t-test. The independent variable is a single sample. It's a categorical variable. In our case, we would call it bags of coffee. The sample participants should be randomly selected, which we know from the word problem, the bags of coffee were randomly selected for this test. Our dependent variable is scale level for which we can calculate a mean. Well, that dependent variable is weight. So we have one group, one sample, bags of coffee, with one dependent variable that has a mean, the weight of the coffee. Then we want to make sure that our dependent variable values pass the following tests. We want to make sure we don't have any extreme outliers. We want to make sure we don't have any missing data. We want to know that our dependent variable data are independent, which we know because they are randomly selected that would pass that assumption. And then finally, the assumption of normality is something that we can check with our software. Given that the assumptions are correct, then we can look at our settings of what we will use so that we can work through the remaining steps of hypothesis testing. With a one sample t-test, the null hypothesis will be that the sample mean is the same as the population mean. And it should be. The sample value should be the same as the population from which it was drawn. We would write our null hypothesis as h sub 0 colon mu equals mu sub 0 and we will actually substitute a number which is the population mean where it says mu sub 0. For our alternative hypothesis we will write h sub 1 colon mu does not equal mu sub 0 and again we will substitute the population mean where it says mu sub 0. Typically, we'll set our alpha level to 0 0.05. Our degrees of freedom are n minus 1, the size of the sample 
minus 1. The critical value is going to be based upon the degrees of freedom and the alpha level of 0 0.05. You can look up a critical value using student's t-distribution table, which I will show you in a moment. But now that we have an idea what the settings should be, let's move on to our remaining steps of hypothesis testing. Step 2. Establish the null and alternative hypothesis. Our research question says, are the sample coffee bags different from specification? We're not establishing a direction of change, heavier or lighter, just are they different? We would write our null hypothesis in words as, sample coffee bags are no different than specification. And in symbols as h sub zero colon mu equals 16, where 16 is the mean of the population, the bags should weigh 16 ounces. For the alternative hypothesis, in words we would describe sample coffee bags are different than specification, and in symbols h sub 1 colon mu does not equal 16. Why are we using a two-tailed test for this example? Because changes in either direction would be bad. Certainly something we would want to know about. The bags can be filled too much or too little. And in either case, we'd want to know that so that we could make adjustments. Changes to either direction or either tail are things that we would want to know about. That's why we're using a two-tailed test. Now we're ready for step three, where we will establish a criteria for significance. We are using a two-tailed test with an alpha level of 0 0.05, and we will establish our critical value using student's t-distribution table. Remember that student refers to William Seeley Gossett, the statistician and master brewer at Guinness Brewing Company who originally created these tables. Where do you find student's t-distribution table? You could look in your textbook. There's probably one in a stats textbook. You could look one up online. Or if you're enrolled in my class, you will have student's t-distribution table provided for you. We will be doing a two-tailed test, so we'll be looking at the columns on the left side of these two columns. The ones on the right say one-tailed test. Our degrees of freedom are 31. You don't see that on this table, but here's the remainder of the table. And you'll notice that we have a 30 and a 40, but no 31. What do you do in this case? If your degrees of freedom are between two values, use the smaller of those two values. So for instance, with 31 degrees of freedom, we will use the degrees of freedom for 30, which is a 2.042. Even if we had 38 degrees of freedom, we would still round down to 30 because 40 would be actually less than 0.05 we would want to be sure to use a number that is more conservative rather than one which actually exceeds the value we've set of 0 0.05. Well, that's one way that we could go about finding our critical value. Another alternative would be to use the effect size and t-test multi-tool that I've provided for you in class or which you could also get from the link in the description for this video. In this multi-tool, I have provided a tab for t-tables for two-tailed tests. And this is how we can find our critical value. Now we could scroll up and down until we find the, the degrees of freedom for 31. Or even more simply, we could use this calculator in the upper right, which already has established an alpha level of 0 0.05 and a two-tailed test, both of which settings can be adjusted. And we would enter our degrees of freedom of 31 and get a critical value of 2.04 for our one sample t-test. And with that, we are ready for step four to calculate the statistics. And to do so, we will go to JASP. You can see that I've placed my coffee bean data on my desktop 
and it comes in an Excel file. Well, let's take a look at those data and see what we're dealing with. There's two tabs. The first, for coffee beans, is the tab that you're going to use if you're enrolled in my statistics class. These are the data that you'll need for your test. But for this video, I'm going to be using the second tab, also the weight of coffee beans in a bag. However, these data are different from the first tab, allowing me to show you how a test is done, but your results will be different from what I show you here. And in both cases, the data are structured the same way. The column represents our one independent variable, our one sample, the weights of beans in coffee bags. Each of the data points represents the weight of an individual bag. Those data points can be added up, divided by n, giving us the mean for the sample. We have one sample with a scale level dependent variable perfect for doing our one sample t-test. But because we're using JASP, we must first save our data as a comma separated values file, which I will save to the desktop as coffee beans. Because I have selected tab B or the video tab, that is the set of data that will be saved as the CSV file. I can close out Excel and there's my data waiting for me on the desktop. Now I'm going to open JASP. Just so you know, I'm using JASP 14.1. I will go to Open, Computer, Desktop, and choose the coffeebeans.csv data set. Click Open, and there's my data. To do a one sample t-test, I will use the t-tests menu and choose one sample t-test. There is a known bug in the t-test right now. It'll be fixed eventually, but it has to do with the effect size. If we ask for an effect size right now, it ignores the test value. It's going to give us the wrong effect size. So for now, we'll just skip the effect size. I'm going to close out this notification and then move my data into the variables box. Now already I'm getting some output but there's something wrong with this output. I'll explain it in just a moment. Let me get the other settings. Uh, I do want to check for normality, make sure my data passed the assumption of normality. I'll get a location estimate with a 95% confidence interval. I will skip the effect size because of the bug, but I will get descriptive statistics and a descriptive plot. You'll notice that my T value is 177, and that's just outrageous because I have not done one very important thing. If something looks really wrong with your one sample t-test, most likely here's what you've done. You must set the test value to the mean of the population. So remember, our coffee bags were supposed to weigh 16 ounces. Let's put 16 in, in as our test value. Now we get numbers that make a lot more sense, a T of 3.264. Let's interpret these data. I'm going to open up the results a little more so we can see everything a bit more clearly. We could determine statistical significance by comparing our T value of 3.264 to our critical value, and we will see that 3.264 exceeds the critical value that we've established for this two-tailed test. Or we could look at our p-value, which we see is a 0 0.003, less than 0 0.05. Or we could look for the 95% confidence interval around the sample mean and see whether this confidence interval includes our population value. The population value is 16, and you notice that value of 16 does not fall within this range. Because the 95% confidence interval does not include the hypothesized value of 16. All of these data points are telling us exactly the same thing. Our sample is statistically significantly different from our population. We can also look for the assumptions checks to see whether our data pass the assumption of normality. Being non-significant, we know that the data do pass that assumption. And here are the descriptive statistics that we're going to need for our write-up as we have interpreted the results and are ready to write up our results in APA style.
Having examined the output, what do we conclude? We will make a decision to reject the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis says that the sample mean and the population mean are the same, but we reject that null hypothesis, instead concluding that the sample mean and the, hypo and the population mean are different, statistically significantly different. This sample of ball bearings is out of control. They are systematically too small. Having interpreted these findings, we can now write up our results in APA style. A one sample t-test was conducted to determine whether the weight of a sample of bagged coffee beans with an N of 32 differed from specification. The mean of the sample, a mean of 16.3 and standard deviation of 0.52, was significantly higher than what was specified, a mean of 16. T with 31 degrees of freedom equals 3.26, P of 0.003, 95% confidence interval of 16.1 to 16.5. The bagging machine should be recalibrated. And that is how you do a one sample t-test using JASP. Be sure to check out the rest of the channel for other videos about how to do statistical tests using JASP, R, SPSS, or Excel.